This is something that affects all of us, whether we realize it or not. The health of our streams and the health of our riparian buffers is critical to our state as a whole. The sedimentation that we're trying to avoid is what reduces or degrades salmon habitat. So if we can manage our activity to reduce that sedimentation and therefore improving Lake Champlain and at the same time protecting our salmon habitat. So there's a lot of efforts going on to restore the riparian areas. It is really important for the whole community to be on board. Individuals can play a role in improving water quality. We all live downstream and I think that we all experience the benefits of these projects. These healthy riparian buffers are filtering out nutrients from our runoff and are holding our soil in place and are providing habitat for wildlife. As we learn more about habitat requirements for salmon in the rivers of the Lake Champlain Basin, it has become clear that a great deal of overlap exists between the needs for salmon habitat restoration and water quality improvement and flood resilience in our communities. Salmon need clean gravels to be able to have their eggs survive and incubate and then to have the fry hatch. So we started to monitor the quality of the spawning sites and we outplanted small boxes of rocks and we buried them at the same level that the salmon eggs would be at. We also looked at how much sediment, you know, came into those boxes through time. What we found is that many of the sites were not viable because there was too much sediment. So if there's a lot of input off of roads or urban areas or fields, that will either suffocate the fish or entomb them. Many of the issues that affect salmon have important repercussions for our communities. We're getting increasing property damage from flood events because of increasing storm frequency and intensity. So we have a lot of work to do to improve our resilience to flooding and to protect the lake from um, degradation. As unfortunate as it was, I think that Tropical Storm Irene really opened people's eyes to the importance of these healthy forested riparian buffers and the areas that didn't have them, the damage that can be done uh, when a large flood event comes through. And so I think that there's a lot of support uh, for doing more in our watershed and, and we have the opportunity to do that. Many watershed organizations rely on volunteers of all ages to help with projects that stabilize riverbanks. We're trying to plant 410 trees. We planted the uh, sugar maple, dogwood, and red oak, so that way the river banks would be stable and it wouldn't cause flooding. I, I belong to the uh, Lake Champlain chapter of Top Limited, and this is one of the things we do to uh, help uh, with the environment, with uh, uh, streams and rivers that are in the area. You know, there's spots along the river here that don't have any overhead growth to kind of hold the river bank together and to protect the water from the sunlight and the heat in the summertime. Basically, I try to contribute and give back to society on some kind of a volunteer basis, you know. <laughs> this is fun for me. Yeah, I enjoy it. In addition, there's been quite a bit of work done on things like cover cropping with lots of farmers. Traditionally, what we would do is, after the corn was harvested, we'd plow that field back up and we'd let it sit there all winter long. As we understand the soil movement more, um, we are changing practices. And we're applying science, so keeping the soil in place during the snow melts and then hopefully during the rains of the spring. That's helping, you know, enrich the organic matter of the soil and keeping the soil in place. All of those practices are going to reduce the sediment that ends up in the river and therefore protecting the habitat that we do have for salmon and, and brook trout. These healthy riparian buffers are really important for migratory birds as they're moving up on their uh, migratory routes and coming into the Lake Champlain Basin to breed for the season. And the community benefits are, are endless. The increased flood resiliency, reducing erosion, reducing sediment and phosphorus input into our lake these are all things that communities downstream are benefiting from, whether they realize it or not. 
efforts to restore salmon habitat, improve water quality, and increase flood resilience have mutual benefits. Progress has been made in all of these areas, but challenges remain. The ongoing work of resource managers and an involved public will help to ensure clean water, healthy ecosystems, and thriving communities. To watch more videos in the Bringing Back Salmon series and to find out where you can learn more about landlocked Atlantic salmon, please visit lcbp.org salmon.